Celestia, the squibble guy is annoying. Seriously, what is this deal? Overanalyzing everything, nitpicking, pointing out cliches or unrealistic situations. God, nobody likes this type of character. And who would listen to someone like that anyway? As if someone would be interested in crap like that. Uh, Tricky, isn't that what you do? Stranger Than Fanfiction is a very self-aware episode of My Little Pony. The idea of Rainbow Dash visiting a daring new convention is pretty cool and as far as I can tell it was a rather accurate presentation of a convention. I should know because I couldn't watch this episode right away because I was at an anime convention. Everything just seems right, the cosplayers are sales ponies, including the rather weird merchandise. Everything is simply spot on. But of course, the most important aspect of this episode is simply Quibble and his interaction with Rainbow Dash. He's one of the best presentations of a fanboy I've seen in a while. He doesn't look like your stereotypical geek for once. I do wonder though if his mane always looked like a grey rainbow, or if this is part of his daring do cosplay. Anyway, his depiction as a fan who only likes the classics and despises the newer entries of the franchise is something you see a lot on the internet. Just replace the words Daring Do during his rant with Star Wars and you have a very familiar sounding discussion. I do like how he actually backs up his opinion with some arguments. He actually reminds me of some analysts in our community. Actually, he would blend right into the rift. Does anybody know a good pet Oswald sound alike? I want to collab with the guy. Of course, Patton, you're welcome to call up with me as well, but I have my doubts that you are interested. I think it's quite hilarious how he comments on the faults in his daring do adventure all the way through and how genre savvy he is. Rainbow Dash on the other paw is a great full film. She is as much of a daring do fan as he is, but she's less critical and just enjoys the ride. Of course, she knows that daring do's adventures are realistic as they are actually more of a biography than fictional works. But even if that wasn't the case, the need to win a discussion about your favorite series is a familiar feeling I know all too well. I had conversations like that, but I think they could have elaborated a bit on the fact what makes the newer Daring Do adventures better in Rainbow Dash's eyes. As far as I can tell, they are more action orientated. Oh yeah, and while we're at it, what did Quibble think of Daring Do and the Ring of Destiny? I'm actually disappointed that there were no references to that book anywhere. Rainbow Dash is on the cover art after all. There should have been at least one RD cosplayer in the background. Because they're horrible! I mean, there isn't a single thing after Ring of Destiny that is even remotely in the realm of the possible! Okay, this is the last minute edition. I only noticed a small Ring of Destiny reference while I was editing the video, so Quibble liked the novel or at least thinks it's not so bad as everything that came after it. But now I really think there should have been a moment of realization for Quibble where he is like, wait a minute, you are that Rainbow Dash? Or something like that. And the next question, how many books were published after it? Daring don't, Rainbow Dash was excited that the next book was only 4 months away, and devastated when they announced to delay it. So there is a strong indication that new books are only published far and few in between, and it's not like we are talking about a monthly series. According to Quibble, however, there were multiple books. Again, I have to question the timeline of the show. There isn't much to say about the main plot of this episode though. It is a very well constructed affectionate parody of the adventure genre, especially Indiana Jones like pretty much everything featuring Daring Do. It was interesting to see Dr. Cavallarin as the main antagonist, as he only appeared in a minor role in Daring Don't and only served as a henchman for a Hui Zotel. And him visiting the con of his arch nemesis was a quite hilarious situation. There isn't that much left to talk about because Quibble basically reviewed the episode for me. Generic jungle locations? Check. Overly complicated villain plot? Check. Random coincidences that conveniently get us to the next big set piece? Check. Half of the episode therefore feels like watching a commentary and I think most of the jokes in this episode worked fantastically. Perhaps one of the best things about this episode is the lesson. It is okay to have a different opinion about your favorite series than others. And even if you disagree, you can still be friends. You can also like something for different reason. God, this episode is like a commentary on the analyst community. Okay, let's wrap things up. As you can see, I had much to say about Strangers and Fanfiction. I really enjoyed this episode and I think it should be watched by everyone. It is very self-aware and represents fanboys very well. 
the lesson that you can like things for a different reason and you can still be friends even if you disagree is pretty good and holds especially true for the analyst community and those who watch their videos. Just because some reviewer didn't like an episode for one reason or the other, that's no reason to start a war in the comment section. I'm also especially happy to see a lesson like that after Spice Up Your Life. Maybe you haven't watched my review of it yet because it took forever to edit and it is on Grey Silverman channel. It's like 20 minutes long and we basically produce an after the fact video without silver quill. You should check it out. I put a link in the description. Anyway, in it I rant a bit about criticism and how bad Spice Up Your Life handles the topic. While it wasn't exactly the focus here, it was handled much better in Stranger Than Fan Fiction. But what about you? Did you like this episode? Anything that bothered you? Do you ship Quibble with Waymo Dash? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and one last thing. I created a Patreon. I don't expect too much, but if you want to support a lovable Kitsune, check it out. I'm Tricky Fox. Stay foxy. Just